Welcome to part 2 of lecture 14 of aerospace propulsion. So we were left with this question of, you know, what's the reason that the core nozzle is always going to be unchoked? Well, fundamentally this is because of the fact that the flow of that stream out of the core is at a much higher temperature. Right? Even after passing through the low pressure turbine, the core stream is much hotter than the bypass stream. And if we assume that the static pressure at the core and bypass nozzle exits are equal, um, then if the stagnation pressure at the core nozzle exit is r roughly equal to that at the bypass nozzle exit, um, the nozzle exit Mach numbers should be equal. And so we'd have to have a lower pressure ratio for the core nozzle in order for them to have equal velocities. So this, I can look at this mathematically, and you know, this shows us the, the velocity ratio. We, we talked about last time that you know, we don't necessarily want this to be exactly one, but we typically want it to be pretty close to one. Um, so the jet velocity for the core over the jet velocity of the bypass, right, this is related to the Mach numbers and the stagnation quantities. But if we're saying the Mach numbers are about the same, if M9 equals M19, then this big fraction is just 1. Um, and uh, then we're just left with this term which is based on the square root of T09 over T019. And T09 is always going to be much higher than T019, so this thing is much greater than 1. So the core jet would be quite a bit faster if we actually had the same Mach numbers. So in order to get the core jet to have roughly equal velocity with the bypass, um, it must be the case that M9 is um, significantly less than M19. And therefore, uh, if M19 is 1, uh, because it's choked, M9 must be unchoked. Now in order to form useful non-dimensional parameters, we need to have some kind of insight. Right, we can create arbitrary non-dimensional combinations of variables based on the Buckingham Pi theorem. This is not difficult to do. But creating ones that actually have some kind of clear physical meaning is really the difficult part. So here's an example of a mass flow parameter through the engine. Now the details of how this were de is sort of derived is in the text. Um, but we see it's the mass flow rate times the square root of uh, Cp, the, the specific heat, um, times T0 2 over d squared, the engine diameter squared, uh, and p naught 2. And this will be a function of this uh, t naught 4 over t naught 2, which is the turbine inlet temperature to compressor inlet temperature ratio, and uh, pa over p naught 2. So one of these is the effect of the fuel flow rate, and the other is the effect of flight Mach number. And alternatively, instead of T04 over T02, we could er, write this in terms of a non-dimensional group that directly includes the fuel flow rate. Um, so we could have a parameter instead that's uh, m dot fuel times the calorific value of the fuel over square root of Cp T02, T squared T02. Um, and that way we would directly involve m dot f. So the first parameter that this is what this is really doing is it's directly relating the energy flux from the fuel burn to that associated with a velocity which scales with the speed of sound uh, times an area, d squared, times a pressure, p naught 2 which is a equivalent to a velocity times a force, so that has units of power just like m dot f times LCV has units of power. There's a couple other really important non-dimensional parameters. We have a non-dimensional rotational speed. This is if n is the rotational speed of the shafts. Um, nd over square root of gamma r t naught 2. Um, why does that look like that? That has to do with maintaining speeds of sound, um, or sorry, maintaining Mach numbers. And we also have the non-dimensional gross thrust from a choked nozzle. Um, this is a little bit complicated looking because we've got two terms in the numerator. We've got a term that comes from the mass flow rate and the exit velocity, and then plus another contribution from a pressure term. We'll talk about this now. So the non-dimensional growth thrust uh, coming from the choke nozzle, um, right? This is what that parameter represents. We know our bypass nozzle is choked at cruise. The thrust from the bypass is normally about 10 times the thrust from the core. And so an approximate treatment of the whole engine um, is appropriate where we just essentially say that we have choke nozzle flow, period. It's not unreasonable because the, the un choked floor contribution is pretty pretty tiny. Um, and so we'll assume we have this mixed choke flow, choke flow for analysis. So in general, uh, under this choke condition, um, the gross thrust cannot be separated from the ambient pressure. Um, so the nozzle's choked, so there's no dependence on the flight Mach number. 
Um, but remember that uh, the jet velocity is not the same as V19. Uh, the jet velocity is very likely supersonic as the flow is going to continue to accelerate past the, the nozzle exit throat. So the, the gross thrust is the mass flow rate times the jet velocity, but that's you know the mass flow rate times V19 plus a contribution from any pressure difference between the nozzle exit and atmospheric pressures. And AN is the nozzle exit area. Um, and again, if our nozzle is choked, then P19 over P019 is known. And we can rearrange to group the terms that only depend on the conditions inside of the engine onto the right hand side, which is the gross thrust plus P0 times AN. Then we want to non dimensionalize by the area and the pressure. Um, two equivalent forms if we work with the left hand side or the right hand side of the equation on the previous slide, doesn't matter. Um, and it's really this gross thrust plus ambient pressure times nozzle area uh, way of looking at it that's, that's sort of the more relevant parameter that we, we typically would take. Now, there's no simple way of scaling for the net thrust. So basically, we have to scale our gross thrust using our non-dimensional parameters. So we've got this parameter for gross thrust, and it depends on P0 4 over P0 2 and P A over P A uh, or P0 2 in general. Um, and then the, the net thrust is going to be found just from its basic definition that it's the gross thrust minus uh, the mass flow rate times the flight velocity. So unfortunately, there's no simple way of doing dimensional scaling for that. And uh, that was derived for a choke nozzle. Let's think about how we could alter this gross thrust parameter when uh, the nozzle is unchoked. Um, so what would essentially change in the definition of the parameter on the left side here um, if we had an unchoked nozzle? So think about this for a minute and try to come up with an answer before you move on to the next part of the video.